Live from Madrid, Spain, it's theCUBE. Covering HPE Discover Madrid 2017. Brought to you by Hewlett Packard Enterprise. Hi everybody, welcome to Madrid, Spain. My name is Dave Vellante and this is theCUBE, the leader in live tech coverage. We're here, this is day one of HPE Discover Madrid, the European version of the event that we cover uh, in the summer, in the spring in Las Vegas. I'm here with my co-host Peter Burris and Bob Moore is here. He's the director of server software and product security at HPE and he's joined by good friend Patrick Osborne who is the, runs product marketing and management for the storage group at HPE. Gents, welcome to theCUBE. Good the to Cube. be here, Dave, Peter. Super. Yeah, very happy to be here. Always yeah. good to see you. Did you bring your sacks? Not this time, my friend, not okay. this time. <laughs> yeah, we had a lot of fun. Where were we in New Orleans last year? Oh you were yeah, playing with the band. You're an awesome sax player, we love it. A uh, big fan, you're a bass player, we got you know, more sax, more horns over there, so. I digress. We need a cube band. Uh, by, by, we need a cube band. <laughs> Bob, a uh, we going. talked uh, this spring in Las Vegas. You guys made a big deal about the silicon level security. You right. uh, made some innovations there. Uh, give us the update on, on why, again, that's so important and, and how has that been received by customers? Yeah, well, I think, uh, uh, answer the second part of the question first, it's really resonating pretty well with customers, honestly, as we get to them and we describe the level of cryptography we have down right into the hardware, the firmware, uh, down into our silicon. They're, those customers that are concerned with security, and frankly all customers are now, really does resonate with them uh, pretty well. And the reason that it's important is because tying all of that security down into a bedrock foundation provides that ability to then leverage in or pull in other objects like storage and, and provide that security without any increase in latency, but also the access and the shared access, being able to do that across multiple platforms, do it securely, and have that sharing capability like we all need to have to, to keep our IT uh, infrastructure running. So it's, it's really critically important. Uh, uh, still to this day, uh, HPE is the only server manufacturer that's able to do that down into the silicon level that, that we're talking about here. So we're quite proud about that. And it's allowed us to, to claim the world's most secure industry standard servers. And now, of course, today we're branching out uh, with other technologies across our storage platform and, and including those into our security strategy. So uh, how does it, Patrick, relate to what you guys are doing on the storage side? Yeah, so I think it's a really good complementary solution in the fact that we can provide the silicone root of trust on the infrastructure level. And then on the storage side, we provide some similar capabilities at the infrastructure level with encryption and a number of other techniques that we have. And then we assist customers in being able to, for in a number of different cases, being able to take, for example, snapshots and backup move those off-site or even into the cloud, um, encrypt those, so you have essentially uh, a silicone root of trust on the infrastructure side for your operating system and your firmware, and then you have essentially a golden image at a point in time of your data, which is a you know, pretty valuable asset. So combine those two, um, we're able to help customers with a pretty aggressive RTO and RPO to be able to recover if they've been breached, right, or when they get breached, essentially. So we have some great examples here today in the show um, of some customers that have used combinations of things like uh, uh, the Gen 10 servers, 3PAR, and Store Once to achieve that level of, of recovery in not days, in, in basically in hours uh, or even faster. And then we have some other technology where you can you know, set up a media break, essentially send all that data out to the cloud and completely have a self-contained encrypted copy of your data to recover from. So we're providing you know, a number of different uh, solutions all the way up and down the stack for customers to be able to help to recover very quickly. So obviously security's been in the news lately, the huge Equifax breach. I mean, you go back you know, to the spring, WannaCry and ransomware. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, how, let's talk about ransomware specifically. How do you guys help a customer sort of address that? I mean, what's the, there's no silver bullet. You know, you hear, just hear talk about air gaps, you guys are talking about right. you know, silicon level security. What, what's the prescription for customers? Well, I'm glad you asked that because ransomware really is on every customer's mind uh, these days. And it is, because it's gone up, ransomware is so lucrative and profitable, it's gone up by 15 fold, 15 times in the last two years, to the point where it's cost companies $5 billion in 2017. And, and by 2019, a company will be infected by ransomware every 14 seconds, so it's just really huge. And, and 
not only the, and we don't encourage paying the, the ransom, but the ransom, if you paid it, was, would be expensive. But the downtime that you experience in recovering can be really expensive uh, for companies as well. So this ability to recover from ransomware or ransomware neutralizer, which is what we're talking about and announcing here today, is, is really new and, and a revolutionary way to recover in a systematic, orderly fashion, starting with the firmware that we talked about that's anchored down into the silicon. So we recover that firmware in case that ransomware malware or virus has migrated because the hackers are getting so incredibly ingenious these days that that malware can hide inside the firmware and it'll go everywhere, the tentacles will go everywhere. But we start the recovery with the firmware so we've got that firm foundation uh, routing out any, any uh, re remnants of the, of the malware. And then on top of that, new today, we're announcing the fact that we can then recover the server settings that take days, sometimes weeks, to set up initially and that'll be recovered uh, and restored automatically. Then we restore the operating system uh, through an ISO site along with the applications. And then finally we bring the data back, as, as Patrick was mentioning, we do that relatively quickly. We're demonstrating that here uh, this week at, at Discover Madrid. And it really does allow customers to avoid having to pay the ransom. We want them to be able to recover, do it quickly and easily without paying the ransom, and that's what we help. But mm -hmm. you mentioned the word trust, which is one of the most or increasingly important worlds or words in the tech industry. We're in Madrid, GDPR is going to start moving in, into uh, force in the first quarter of next year. May 2018, yeah. And so second quarter. And uh, it's going to create some fair amount of tension, not just here in Europe, but on a global basis. Uh, I was talking to an expert who suggested that if the Equifax breach had occurred in Europe uh, under GDPR, it would not have been just embarrassment, it would have been about 60, 70 billion dollars worth of fines. So right. we're talking not just about you know, nice things to have, we're talking about over the course of the next five years, you have to have this level of capability inside your infrastructure or you will be out of business. I think it's true, absolutely. The GDPR, the penalties associated are so severe with that. Uh, you know, up to $20 million or 4% of the annual revenue of the parent company. So it can just be a massively impactful, mm. uh, financially impactful, uh, hurtful uh, to the companies. We're talking today uh, and this week about GDPR and how we help companies get ready for that. And, and you, you mentioned the Equifax breach. Actually, we have uh, with our HP Gen 9 and Gen 10 solutions, server networking and storage, applied the NIST 853 uh, controls to that. And if they had applied those and, and used our solution we believe after having looked at the Equifax breach, that would not have happened had they followed the security controls that are in NIST. NIST, and there's a lot of articles published about how NIST can help companies get ready for the GDPR in Europe, and so we've got the NIST controls, we went through all the time, energy, and, and funding to create the NIST security controls. That will help 100% of those apply to the ISO certification, ISO 27001, 27002, which then lends itself to being GDPR compliant. So not only do we help customers through this great new technology that we have in the Silicon Route of Trust, and that's helpful in getting ready for the GDPR, but also these NIST controls. But it's also that, uh, it's also that uh, the, well the conversations that we're having with CIOs is that GDPR, even though it's centered here in Europe, is likely to have an effect on global behavior. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things that they're looking for is they're looking for greater commonality in the base infrastructure about how it handles security so that they can have greater commonality in how their people do things so they can be better at targeting where the problem is, when the problem happens, and how to remediate the problem. So talk a little bit about how more commonality in the infrastructure, especially when we talk about storage, which yep. is increasing the value proposition, is how you share data is going to liberate resources elsewhere in the business to do new and better things faster. Yeah, I think for, for, from, from an HPE perspective, uh, you're not going to solve GDPR with any specific point product, right? And that's, it's not really our message to the market that you implement this and you're going to go satisfy those requirements. It's definitely part of a, a solution, but what we've been trying to do is you see, we've got the silicone root of trust on the server side and a number of security features and we're talking about how we integrate that with uh, the storage. We're starting to bring together a more of a vertically oriented stack that includes 
all those pieces and that they work together. So instead of having a, a security or a commonality layer at the server layer, at the networking layer, at the storage layer, thinking about it as a service that's right. more vertically oriented through the stack, where you're able to take a look at all aspects of the networking, uh, what's going on with the firmware and the operating system, and all all the way down to essentially your securing the data and exactly. not the device. Exactly, exactly. And so for us, I mean, we're, 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 you see it in, in themes for for three par, for SimpliVity on the on the hyperconverged area, and all the converged systems on the compute side. We're really providing integrated security and integrated data protection that is inherently secure with encryption and a whole a, a, a host of other techniques. So really, we're trying to provide it from the application level on down through the infrastructure, a set of capabilities in the products that work together uh, to provide you know, a little bit more of a secure infrastructure for customers. One of the things we yeah. talked to Bill Feldman about on theCUBE recently was, and Patrick, I'm sure you've heard this, and maybe you too as well, Bob, but boo-boos happen, and boo-boos happen now today really fast, so they replicate very mm -hmm. quickly. So how do you deal with fast boo-boo replication and sort of rolling back to the point where you, know, you can trust that, that data. Yeah, so I mean, so we, there's a couple uh, techniques and, and, and innovations that we brought within the storage realm uh, in terms of integrating that whole experience. So our, our big thing is on the storage side has been how can you provide an experience from all flash on-prem out to the cloud from a data perspective and have all that integrated. So we've got a, uh, a number of things we just actually announced here at Discover in terms of Three par, all flash, and, and nimble, uh, being able to federate that um, primary storage with your secondary storage on prem, and then be able to have that experience go off prem into the cloud. So you do have a media break and a number of things. Uh, I think from a solution perspective, integrating with some of our top tier partners on the availability side, like a Veeam, you know, for example, that gives you that um, really holistic application level view, uh, you know, in the, in the context of virtualization, is something that helps, you know, do the very rich cataloging experience and, and, and pieces. So I wonder if we could t talk about a topic that's been uh, discussed in, in our communities, which is the biggest threat um, within cyber is, is the weaponization of social media. You, you've sort of seen it with fake news and, and Facebook. And I wonder if you guys are having similar conversations with customers. And, the, and even ransomware, you look at WannaCry, it was sort of state sponsored and actually not a lot of, of money you know, went back to the right, perpetrators. Right. It, it, it was, maybe it was a distraction to get other you know, credentials. And it, you, know, you see in different signatures, of Russians, very sophisticated hackers, they target pawns and make them feel like kings and then grab their credentials and then go in and, and get you know, critical data. So when you think about things like the weaponization of social media, uh, how can you guys help sort of detect uh, um, what's going on, anomalous behavior, and, and address that? You've got you know, silicon level, you've got right. the, the, the storage component, uh, do analytics come into play? Is there a whole house picture that you can? Yeah, I think help that, I think with? that's the next level. You know, we, it, it's almost an iterative process. As soon as we develop a protection or the ability to detect uh, cybersecurity breaches, then the hackers uh, try to outdo that, and so we're continually leapfrogging. And I think the next step is probably with machine learning. We're starting to actually deploy some of that at HPE. That artificial intelligence, and we have some of that now uh, with uh, our storage, our nimble storage, as well as uh, our Aruba networking with the uh, technologies that Aruba has with the introspect, uh, can now look at the uh, communication inside of a network and determine if there's nefarious behavior and, and watch the behavior analytics as well as the signatures that are going on inside the network and actually then communicates with ClearPass and can proactively take take some charge of that and rule out that user that's potentially a bad actor before any damage is really done. Mm -hmm. Same way on, with the, on the storage side yep. with the, uh, the InfoSite that has great, in fact, it was so, so great of AI intelligence that we're actually sharing as we look at ransomware viruses, they're looking at uh, uh, the signatures that those leave and the trails that ransomware leaves behind so that the storage systems can actually proactively route that out with machine learning mm -hmm. and artificial intelligence. So that's where we're headed with HPE. But it's, 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 uh, it's not only, it's not only uh, finding ways to fix the boo-boos, it's acknowledging or recognizing that the boo-boo has occurred. So how is this new capability 
facilitating or increasing the speed with which problems are recognized. Yeah, so I think one of the, the, the important points that Bob made is that we are, so we're announcing uh, this week uh, on the storage side uh, some concepts around AI for the data center and specifically around our predictive analytics with InfoSight and applying that from Nimble to the three PAR systems and then setting out a vision that is going to basically enable us to use that AI at the infrastructure layer across other areas within the portfolio. Servers, networking, and for at the speed at which this is moving, you can't solve this at the human level, right? So for us to be able to whitelist and blacklist customers based on uh, our learning across a very large install base, if you think about the amount of compute nodes and the amount of storage you know, that we sell as an infrastructure company, we can learn in being able to you know, proactively help customers avoid those situations. So that's something we're actually, you know, we actually yeah. are implementing today. And, and let me follow up with that because it's a great lead in or tie back to GDPR that we were discussing because there's yep. reporting requirements within 72 hours, right? Yep. The GDPR says you've got a uh, report that you had a breach and how do, you, how do you report that if you're not certain? Well, with, with our Silicon Root of Trust and the Gen 10 servers, we actually are monitoring all that per, uh, server essential firmware every 24 hours. Now some of our competitors monitor or check the firmware one time when you boot up the server and never again until you maybe reboot the server, right? But we're doing at HPE that check every 24 hours and that's an automated process and so you ask how it can be detected. Well, we can detect that because you'll get an alert coming back to the user of the server that there's been a breach and then that can be reported. We got to go, I'm glad you mentioned automation because that's a big factor of yeah. reducing false positives because people just don't have time to drink it from a fire hose. Bob, Patrick, thanks very much for coming to theCUBE. Great, thanks so much for having Enjoy us. Enjoy the week. Thanks yeah, so much, we appreciate All it. All right, keep it right there, everybody. We'll be back with our next guest. This is theCUBE, we're live from HPE Discover in Madrid. We'll be right back. <laughs>